Hello students, we are going to start the topic of epigenetics. Epigenetics is a topic uh, which you feel that it is a very difficult topic and we cannot understand all these things. And it's very difficult to learn, I am going to leave this epigenetics like that. No, it's not a topic that you cannot just leave like that because it's a currently very important topic and it's a recent trend, uh, trended question or trended uh, topic is the epigenetic topic. And once you understand the crux of this, then you will never forget what is epigenetics. So, we are going to start the topic of epigenetics. The name itself tells you what is it. So, epigenetics. I will give an example here. You know uh, a caterpillar. A caterpillar. Then you can see this under this leaf you can see a pupal state or pupa under this leaf and you can see a butterfly. See, in these three stages, one, three metamorphic stages you can find out. So, in these three metamorphic stages, is there any difference in its genetic element? No, whether it is a caterpillar or in the pupa or in the butterfly, the basically its genetic element is the same. But you see the expression, you see the difference in its morphological form, they is entirely different from one another. Means that this genetic elements apart from being, uh, uh, you know, there is something which is controlling these genetic elements from above. So, epigenetics can be considered as playing of a piano. So, when you play the piano, you are not taking one key one from the other or you are not taking these keys from one position to another. So, if you want to play sa, re, ga, ma, pa, then you have to follow or c, d, e, f, g like that. If you want to play, you have to follow that order, which means that you are not taking the keys from one position to another, but you are controlling these keys from above. This is the concept of epigenetics. So, epigenetics means epi. What does epi? Epi means over. It is outside. So, there is something which is controlling the genes from above that is called as epigenetics. Now, we will see what is the definition of epigenetics. The definition of epigenetics is it is reversible. Just compare this with the mutation. Mutation is permanent. This is reversible. Reversible, heritable means it can be passed to the next generation. Reversible, heritable, chemical modification. Chemical modification of DNA or chromatin, which means histones can be modified, which is not the DNA, but it is a part of chromatin. So, it is a chemical modification of the DNA or chromatin without altering the nucleotide sequence. Okay, just compare with mutation, I have told you mutation is permanent whereas epigenetics is reversible and that is the important point here also. Because as it is reversible, this epigenetic modification, if it is causing some pathological alteration with the pharmacological agent, you can reverse the situation. Unlike mutation where you have to do some uh, genomic editing, etc. But here it, it is possible to reverse it. That is the important point here. And you just see the next thing that I am going to concentrate here is altering the nucleotide sequence. What about mutation? mutation is altering in nucleotide sequence, but in epigenetics there is no alteration in its nucleotide sequence. Again, this is one difference between mutation and epigenetics. Epigenetics, no alteration in nucleotide sequence. Mutation, there is alteration in nucleotide sequence. Mutation is permanent, epigenetics is reversible. And next is just compare this with polymorphism. Polymorphism is also a normal variation in its nucleotide sequence. So, this is actually a chemical modification. So, polymorphism is also there is a difference and there is alteration in the 
nucleotide sequence. So, whether it is polymorphism or it is mutation, there is alteration in nucleotide sequence, but in epigenetics, there is no variation in the nucleotide sequence. So, these are the things which I want to compare it with others. So, in this topic of epigenetics, we will be learning about First, we have learned its definition. Now, we will be learning about the epigenetic modifications. Epigenetic modifications and its functional consequences. So, this is divided into two. First, the DNA modifications. The other is histone modifications. In this DNA modification, the two important modification is DNA methylation and demethylation or removal of the methyl, uh, methyl group. So, ma major it is the DNA methylation. In histone modification, there are so many are there, but before that, let me tell you if the histone is modified, means histone is a protein. So, a protein is modified means it is a post translational modification. It is a post translational modification and you should know, you should also understand that this, this uh, post translational modification on the histone is also called as or when you are modifying this, uh, it is also called as a histone cord. So, this modification on the histones are called as histone cord and anything which uh, write on this histone, they are called as cord writers, which means if a histone is modified, like uh, for example, histone is acetylated, histone is phosphorylated, that is called as or that uh, enzyme that writes that code is called as histone, the code writer. And something which erase that code is called as code eraser. So, this terms you usually apply for histone. So, the histone cord, histone cord writers and histone cord erasers. So, these are the major classification of the epigenetic modification. Now, we are going to see one by one starting from the DNA methylation, then we will see the histone modifications. So, DNA methylation DNA methylation usually the enzyme that methylates the DNA is DNA methyl transferase. The short sweet name for this enzyme is DNMT. DNMT. Usually the DNA methylation happens on the cytosin residues. And cytosin residues is usually present in the CPG islands. What do you mean by CPG island? CPG island means if this is a strand of DNA, this is a C and you can see a G here and that P stands for that phosphodiester bond. So, CPG island means isolated C, then PG island means it is surrounded by other nucleotides. So, you can see an isolated C and G and you should never confuse this with, you know this is not, you see if this is two strands of DNA, you know if this is G, this will be C. This is not CPG. What is CPG is on the same strand, you can see this is on the same strand. This is not the GP, this is actually a base pair. So, this is not the CPG uh, what I am meaning here because that, that is why the importance of P there. See when this is G and C this bond is a hyd uh, hydrogen bond, but this bond is a phosphodiester bond. So, C, P, G is a on the same strand and island means that on either side of this it is not C or G. So, you can see an isolated C, P, G, 
some other uh, nucleotides you can find on the other side like uh, anything like A or T anything you can see on either side so CPG will be island you know it's isolated like just like that one CPG and on either side it won't be any C or G so this is called a CPG island and usually the CPG island C will be methylated and in the genes the CPG islands is present in the promoter region promoter region you know the importance of the promoter region the promoter region indicates the uh, you know uh, the rna polymerase will binds to the promoter and that will ignite the start of transcription so anything which is in the promoter gene will affect the what the expression of the structural genes so promoter regions is a very sensitive area where the transcription is being controlled so, if any modification in this promoter region will control the transcription of the structural genes. So, that is the importance of CPG islands and these cytosine residues are usually methylated. Next is uh, if these cytosine residues are methylated, what is the effect of this? The effect of this is when this methylation results in decrease in the transcription. decrease in the transcription of the gene. So, if something is decreasing the transcription of gene means that the gene is being silenced. So, this means that gene silencing, gene silencing. So, methylation usually results in the silencing of the gene expression. It is a very, very, very important point, gene silencing. Next, we are going to learn uh, about this DNA methylation. Uh, we have learned it is usually at the cytosine residues. It causes gene silencing. The next modification are the histone modifications. So, first we learn the histone modification or now we learn the histone modifications. So, in the histone modification, the first we learn histone acetylation. Now, I am going to show you what is happening when a histone is being acetylated. You know, if this is a chromosome, what I am drawing here is the DNA and these are the histones which condense this chromosome. So, or uh, you can see that uh, uh, the organization of the DNA where the histones is bound with the uh, DNA. Now, these histones if it is acetylated. acetylated you know acetyl means ch3 coo minus what is the charge of the acetyl group it's a negative charge what is the charge which is predominantly seen in the histones it is the positive charge you know the histones are rich in positive charges so when the histones are acetylated it means that it decreases the positive charges it decreases the positive charges in the histones Okay. So, you know that the DNAs are what charged? DNAs are negatively charged. So, DNA is negatively charged. So, this negatively charged DNA is bind, binding with the positively charged histone. That is why it is being condensed. But when the acetylation is happening on this positively charged histones, this will decrease the positive charges on the histones, which means the interaction between the histone and the DNA is increasing or decreasing? It is decreasing, which means the DNA becomes condensed or uncondensed or less condensed. See, if is adding the positive charges, it means that the organization of the DNA is decreasing or in other words, you can see that the chromatin becomes, now you can, you have to tell in terms of chromatin. Chromatin is less condensed. You know, if something is less condensed, just uh, see what we have learnt in the organization of the DNA. What is euchromatin and what is heterochromatin? When the chromatin is less condensed, then is it U or hetero? It is a, yes, it is a euchromatin. Less condensed means, you know, less condensed means the DNAs are opened up. 
So when the DNAs are opened up means that the promoter regions will be opened. So these promoter regions can be bound with the transcription factors and the transcription ha can happen. So less condensed means DNA is opened up, the promoter regions will be exposed. So when these promoter regions are exposed, more transcription factors can come and bind and the DNA can be expressed. So it, in other words, this means that there is increased euchromatin, which in turn means there is increased expression of the genes, increased expression of genes, right. So this is called as gene activation and this is called as what? This is called as a permissive chromatin. Permissive means what? It permit the transcription factors to bind. So this type of chromatin is called as permissive chromatin. So histone acetylation favor what permissive chromatin. 